Praise God, I'm called Maggie, and welcome to Dominion Church International Mbuya. We are a ministry that is committed to the word, worship, and witness, and we are delighted that you have chosen to fellowship with us today. God has a special message for you today, and a miracle with your name on it. All you have to do is sit back and stay with us for the next one hour. All our church services have now moved online. Our Sunday service, just like this one, starts from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. And on Tuesdays, we do have Pastor John Bazira taking us through our Bible study. That is starting from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. We are still learning about the book of Revelations and all always remember to log in on time. And on Fridays, we do have the Holy Spirit Revival Service, starting from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. with our senior pastor, Robert Kaziwe. Always remember to log in on time. All these services are live on our social media platforms. That is at Facebook and YouTube at Dominion Church International. Now, the Sunday, the church programs are still running, and we do need your support. And in that way, if you do have your tithe and your offering, please deposit it on the numbers that are shown below on your screen. Now, I don't know exactly where you're seated right now or where you are, be it in the bedroom or sitting room, but please get ready wherever you are. Gather your family, gather your friends, because we are going in for a great praise and worship session led by the Dominion Praise Ministries. Please stand up. Let us welcome the Dominion Praise Ministries. And always remember, we love you so much.
are holy, Jesus. We bless your name, Father God. We honor you, Jesus. We choose to worship you this morning. We glorify your holy name. No one is like you, Jesus. Only you are holy. You are holy, Jesus. You are holy. Jesus, you're holy. Lord, you're holy. You are holy, God. You alone are holy. You make us righteous, oh God. You renew our strength. You transform our lives, Jesus. You're seated in heavenly places, oh Lord. No one compares to you, Father God. We choose to glorify your name. Lord, you're holy, God. You are the rock of ages. You are our fortress, Jesus. We bless your name, Lord. No one is like you, Jesus. You are holy. You are holy, God. You are holy, Lord. You are holy, holy, holy. We join the angels saying, Lord, holy. We join the angels crying, holy are you, God Almighty. You are holy, Lamb of God. You're seated on the throne, God. Yes, you are holy. Yes, you are holy. We join the angels, God.
Yes, you are the Lord. Most high. Yes, you are the Lord. Most high. Yes, you are the Lord. Most high. Yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you are the Lord. Most high. Yes, you are the Lord. Most high. Wherever you are, I want you to continue worshiping the Lord. Take a few moments to acknowledge. His Lordship. Acknowledge His greatness. Acknowledge His power. Father, we honor you. You are the Lord Most High. There is no other God like you. You are the Most High. I God. We bless you and we honor you. We magnify you and we glorify you. You are king above all kings. You are Lord above all lords. You are great and you are greatly to be praised. And your greatness is unsearchable. We bless you, bless you, bless you. In the name Mourinha. which is above every name. Mourinha. The name of Jesus. Mourinha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to put your hands together and just give a clap of praise. He is worthy. Somebody shout. Somebody give him some praise. Somebody make some noise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the Lamb of Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the Most High God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once again, welcome you to this wonderful service, to this wonderful moment where we believe that God Almighty is touching you and healing you and blessing you in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Amen and amen and amen. Amina, amina. My name is Robert Kazibwe. Robert Kazibwe. The senior pastor of Dominion Church Omusumbo International Mbuya. Dominion okay. Church International Mbuya. I want you to know from the depth of my heart that I love you and truly love you. And I'm praying for you. And I believe that your breakthrough is nearer than you think. I believe that God has not forgotten you. I believe God will touch you and change you and bless you. I believe if you and I if all of us can agree God will do something for us. The Lord Jesus taught us and said if two or three shall agree as touching to anything on this earth that they shall ask it shall be done. If two or three shall 
shall agree as touching anything on this earth. Jesus told us it shall be done. So I want you to agree with us that by the end of this service the power of God will come to you. That by the end of this service God will remove all the delays to your healing, to your blessing, to your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. If you have your Bible with you, would you kindly go with me to the book of Matthew? St. Matthew chapter 9. Last Sunday, we spoke from St. Matthew chapter 8. Let's move on now to chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9 and verses 18. The Bible says, While he spoke the things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead. But come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. Let's read that verse again. While he spoke the things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and washed him, saying, My daughter is even now dead. But come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. Now I want you to go to the book of John, chapter 12. John, chapter 12, and verses 42. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, anoint these words. Anoint my lips. Anoint the hearing of your people. That faith will come alive. For their breakthrough, for their healing. For their miracles in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. I want to use for a subject. Ministering to these few minutes. Faith. That cannot be denied. Faith cannot be denied. Faith that God can be impressed with and make God to do something for you that nobody can do for you. Make God come to your level and lift you up and pick you up in the name of Jesus. In the Chapter we have read. Chapter 9. There are five powerful miracles. Four of those miracles were miracles of people that exhibited faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. One of the miracles was a miracle that was done because Jesus had mercy. And that was a miracle when they brought a man who was demon possessed he had a demon and Jesus cast out the demon and I understand when God moves by mercy and by grace and performs a miracle but what if he takes time what if there are some delays what if it will take him years and many of us are living in a time when we need God to do something for us. When we need God to bless us. When we need God to assure us that it is well with our soul. When we 
looking up to God, telling God that somehow do something for us. Not because we have faith, but simply because we are so afraid and we are so timid and we are filled with fear and we don't know what to do. And we live in such a time when fear is all around us, when sickness is all around us, when pain is all around us, when we don't know which way to take, when we don't know where our help will come from. And so we live in such a time. But whether we live in such a time or we live in other times, at the end of the day, the God of miracles, the Jesus who performs miracles, requires faith from us, not fear. Let me say it again. It doesn't matter which times we live in. Peaceful times, troubled times, war times. It makes no difference. At the end of the day, whether you are crying, whether you are about to die, no food in the house, somebody is sick, at the end of the day, God will always require faith from you. It doesn't matter whether you are sinking like Peter. It makes no difference whether you are at the end of your life. It doesn't matter whether you have dead like Lazarus. When Jesus comes at that tomb, he will still look for faith. Are you hearing me, beloved? Remember the tomb of Lazarus. Martha made some noise and Martha said, don't remove the stone because my brother right now is Thinking. And then Jesus said to Martha, Martha, didn't I tell you, if you will believe, you will see. If you will believe, you will see. Even at that point, Jesus is still looking for faith. Hear me, child of God. Whether you are about to die, whether COVID is all around you, no food in the house, God is still looking for faith. But how can you rise up in your faith and come to a level that your faith cannot be denied? In the text we have read, when you read from verses 1 to 4, there is a miracle. A miracle of a man who was down and out and they brought him through a roof. And the Bible tells us that when Jesus saw their faith, when Jesus saw their faith, he didn't see the affliction. It was faith first and then the affliction. Faith first and then the affliction. What touched Jesus was their faith, not their sickness. Let me say it again. What touched Jesus was not the sickness. Yes, the man was sick. Yes, the man was down and out. But the Bible tells us when he saw the faith, then he said something. And from there, we see another miracle. There is a woman with the issue of blood. In that same chapter. It came. And she said as she came to Jesus. If I may touch by the hand of his garment. I shall be made whole. And the Bible tells us. She came and she touched. And when she touched. Jesus Yes, and Jesus began to ask, yes, who, touched who, touched who touched me? Who touched me? Who touched me? And then Peter said, when we look around, people are pushing you. People are thronging at you. People are around you. And Jesus said, no, I don't need push 
preachers. I don't need people that are thronging at me. All I need are people of faith. There is somebody in this crowd who had enough faith to touch me. And the Bible says, when the woman saw that she could not be healed, she came and told Jesus what had happened and how it happened. And the Bible tells us, and Jesus said to her, Daughter, thy faith has made you whole. Thy faith has is making you whole. And from there we have another miracle. We have two blind men that come to Jesus in that same chapter. And the Bible tells us that they begin to cry and they say to Jesus, Son of David, have mercy, have mercy upon us. And the Bible tells us that Jesus kept quiet until he got in a house. When he got into the house, he sat down and they came to him. Finally, he looked in their eyes and says, do you have faith? Do you believe that I can do this? And then they said, yes, Lord, And then Jesus said these words, let it be done to you as you believe. And their eyes were open. Those four miracles are powerful. And the Bible tells us they happened because of faith. Not because of chance. Not because of circumstance. Not because of the right condition. Or the wrong condition. Not because these people were righteous or not righteous. Not because they were at the right place at the right time. No. In that day, there were a lot of people that were sick. There were a lot of people that were oppressed. Press, a lot of people, people that, that we are tormented, a lot, there are a lot of people that we are looking for God to have mercy upon them, but only those four miracles happen out of the needy people. And today, if you can come with faith, you can be healed out of the many sick folks because God is no respect of person. Listen what I'm going to say, but is respect of faith. Let me say it again. God is the respect of person. All of us can come. The way we are. All of us can pray. In whatever condition we are in. But what touches his heart. Is your faith. Now the faith of Jairus. Impresses me the most. Bible tells us in the book of Luke chapter 8 that Jairus was a ruler of the synagogue. There was a synagogue where he was the chief rabbi. And in that text we have read of John, the Pharisees and the chief rulers had a meeting and they agreed if anyone come out publicly and confesses Jesus and tells the world that Jesus is from God. He is going to lose his job. John has told us that they had agreed that if any among them will come out and say Jesus is the son of God will come out and say Jesus can heal will come out and say, Jesus performs a miracle. He will lose his job. And in those days, everything about the children of Israel, about the society, about the nation of Israel, was directed by the temple. When you need to buy land, you have to go to the priest. Marriage, priest. Discipline, so everything about life was set about the temple and the worship and the priest. And so if you 
are rebellious and they cast you out of the temple then nobody will hear you you become an outcast of society you go nowhere for justice you go nowhere for mercy you are alienated from the people from the community and everybody was made aware that that is the person that is an outcast no more dealing with him and Jairus knew exactly that but you know something when trouble comes when trouble comes when trouble comes when trouble comes you have to do the best you can to look for healing to look for solutions and many of us in life because of pride because of people because of fear we don't get out to go to the right place to go to the right solution we keep wandering sometimes looking for help at night like Nicodemus he came to Jesus at night and he says to Jesus we know we know that you are a true teacher from God for no man can do those miracles except God is with him but Nicodemus could not come during the day and here is Jairus he has one daughter and the daughter is 12 years old and the Bible tells us she got so concerned. And I strongly believe that this gentleman tried to look for help everywhere. And then she knows, he knows, sorry, he knows that the miracle worker can do something. But if he goes to the miracle worker, what's going to happen to him? He's going to lose his job. He's going to lose his security. He's going to lose his status. He's going to lose his position. But the problem was too much until he said to himself what happens will happen but I'm going to Jesus what will happen will happen but I'm going to receive prayers from Jesus I don't care if you need a miracle from God you have to get out of fear you have to get out of people's attitudes and people's opinions you have to come to a place where it's only God that matters in your life and the Bible tells us he came to Jesus and the first thing he does when he comes to Jesus he bow to the Lord Jesus and he begin to worship him and begin to tell him and begin to tell him, you are the greatest master. You are the greatest healer. And he's saying that in the midst of death. He's saying that because he knows. Because he knows that the child is right now dead. But it's not death now. It is the acknowledging of the greatness of Jesus. And what Jesus can do. And the miracle power of Jesus. And Mercy and compassion. He doesn't talk about his problem. He simply give him worship. He simply give him glory. He simply give him honor. He simply give him glory. And that's what God is looking for. When you come to him in the midst of your pain, in the midst of your challenges, and you begin to raise your hand, and you begin to give him all the blessing, and you begin to tell him, you are the greatest God. Yes, there is pain, but you are a healer. Yes, there is confusion, but you are the prince of peace. It's not about the problem now. It's about worshipping you and giving you the glory. And after worship, then he tells Jesus. Because in worship, he got Jesus' attention. In worship, he got Jesus' attention. And then Jesus said, okay, what is it now? And the Bible tells us, Jairus told Jesus, you know what? Right now as I speak, my child is dead. 
But if you come and lay your hand, he shall live. I don't care about death. Death is real. But your healing grace is real. In the name of Jesus. And that's where God wants you to come. That's where faith must come. And that is faith that cannot be denied. When you despise your problem, and you lift the power of God, and you lift the name of Jesus, and you lift the promises of God above it all, and today, if you come like that, but the first way you come is to acknowledge him as your Lord and Savior. If you had never done that, that's the first way you come. It's not a problem. It is worship first. It's not a problem first. It is worship. It is worship. And the way you worship him is to acknowledge him as Lord in your life. If you are in your home and you have never accepted Christ, I want you to raise those hands. And I want you to worship him. I want you to acknowledge him. I want you to tell him, I love you, Jesus. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Come in my life. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for dying for me. And I believe when you die, you rose from the dead to give me holiness, to give me righteousness, to open a way for me to my God. And I accept the sacrifice. I accept that mercy. And right now I believe with my heart that you rose from the dead. And I confess with my mouth that you are my Savior. And in the name of Jesus, from my head up the soles of my feet, I am saved in the name of Jesus. But you know, when Jesus comes, he comes with his in grace. He comes with his mercy. When Jairus acknowledged him, Jesus said, yes, I will come. And the Bible tells us that finally he came to his house and then he looked at his daughter and said these words, Talitha Kumi, which means, daughter, arise. And the Bible says, Bible this, her spirit came back and she lived again. Because you have acknowledged Jesus and you have given him worship, hear these words, rise from your suffering, rise from your deathbed, rise from COVID, rise from your pain, rise from your bondage. In the name of Jesus, let hell open out. In the name of Jesus. Let the grave open out for you. In the name of Jesus, get out of that bed of affliction. Hear the master speak this words to you. Rise and be healed. 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 In your finances, rise and be healed. In your sickness, rise and be healed. In your confusion, rise and be healed. In that death. Rise and be healed. Rise and be healed. Rise and be healed. From your head up to the source of your feet. Rise and be healed. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. And I believe healing has come. What you need to do is to begin exercising your faith. Is to begin rising up. Yes, there's still pain maybe, but as you exercise the faith, you will walk in Jesus' name. You will be well in Jesus' name. God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We'd like to hear from you. Connect with us. Write to us. Let us know what God has done. 
join our media platforms. And I believe God will bless you. The numbers are on your screen. In Jesus' name. Now get your offering and let's give to the Lord. And the number is also on your screen. Or if you live around this area, the church office is open. You can always come. But you can give at the comfort of your home. In the name of Jesus. Father, as your people give, we release blessing, we release grace, we release mercy, let every door be open, let everything they touch be blessed in the name of Jesus, we declare grace, we declare Malachi, chapter 3, let heavens be open upon them, in the name of Jesus, we love you, until we meet again, next Sunday, until we meet again next Sunday, next Sunday. Be, blessed. be blessed this is Pastor Robert Kaziwe and my interpreter Joseph Kauchi God bless you in Jesus' name Amen Amen